Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for another video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about an update to the banana mori. So these are really, really pretty looking eels. Uh, very, uh, used to be very difficult to find. And uh, I posted one video only so far, and that's been a, a while, so like six, seven months. So it's time to do an update. Um, I'm also doing an update to the aquarium. So uh, yeah, everything all together. I hope it's going to be an exciting video, and I hope you'll learn something. So here we are in front of the 270 gallon tank. This tank is six feet long, three, uh, two feet front to back and three feet tall. And this is the tank where the banana moris usually live in. Um, the reason why it's all emptied out is because I had to temporarily place the giant mori and the tessellata mori into this tank. And uh, in order to, for them to be comfortable, I had to remove everything to uh, you know, have the most space for them. And I did that because I had to temporarily um, you know, break the 1000 gallon system down because I was redoing the filtration system. But now this project is all finished. You can watch it on the channel and the eels are back in their main display tank. And uh, so now I can actually redo this tank for the banana eels. So I will still install the same 3D background that was in there before because it's custom made for this tank and it would be a shame to not use it. But I will also install a pipe system, uh, which is something that I haven't tried before. Um, I've, done, I've done pipe systems before, but not this particular kind. So what I'm talking about is um, not just using regular white PVC, but also using some clear PVC. And my goal is to install um, a pipe system that has this clear PVC in the front. And uh, so that you can actually see the banana eels slithering through the pipe system when it's all done. Uh, so that may look pretty cool. And other than that, uh, for filtration, I uh, no longer use the Triton 44 sump. Instead, I'm using a 100 gallon aquarium as a sump. So this is the tank where the banana eels used to live in, and then it became a refugium for the 1000 gallon system. And now it's going to be repurposed as a sump for this tank. So I'm going to get going and we'll provide updates as I go. All right, so the PVC tunnel system is now installed and uh, we have one, two, three, four, five openings for the banana eels. And as you can see, I used a clear PVC pipe for the front part, so I'm able to see them actually move through the pipe system, which should look pretty cool. And unfortunately, I didn't have clear PVC glue. That's why you see this purple stuff, but this should all be covered by the sand on the rocks. And um, I'm also uh, not going to be using the 3D background because um, these 3D backgrounds, the saltwater versions from Aquatic Core backgrounds, they're very thick and they, so they stick out to the front a lot and at the same time have a lot of uh, you know, hollow open, uh, space in the back for dirt and to accumulate for fish to get trapped. And because this tank is only two feet front to back, I don't want to lose even more space by a super thick background. So I'm just going to be uh, using, you know, all my rocks that I have, my life rock uh, to make uh, this look nice, uh, should look pretty good. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be placing in the rocks now, probably making three islands. So one here, one here and one here. I don't want to stack all the rocks towards the back just to hide the black background uh, because that would be, uh, you know, a detritus trap. And um, yeah, so I'm going to start going on that and provide you an update soon. All right, so I just finished all the plumbing and uh, I'm doing a test run with just tap water to see if I have any leaks. Um, here we see the 100 gallon sump and we have two pumps. Uh, the big one is basically pumping the water back from uh, each, uh, you know, a nozzle from on each corner. And then down here, you see that I have, uh, you know, two more openings and um, so this tank, I knew it was drilled towards the bottom, but before I had the 3D background installed, so I never used these openings because I didn't want to drill into the 3D background. Uh, it's a really thick background, so it would have been a big pain in the ass. But since I'm not using this, uh, the 3D background for this setup um, anymore, I decided to utilize these. And uh, I'm basically fixing a similar issue that I had with the 1000 gallon Mori tank, where I simply didn't have enough flow at the bottom of this tank. So now that I have these nozzles pointing, uh, pointing in each direction, I can create a lot more flow at the bottom and this will really help with you know getting 
uh, rid of detritus traps and making sure that there's no gunk accumulating on the bottom and will make it a lot easier for me to maintain this tank. All right, so this test is successful now. So I have no leaks and I'm going to start draining the water and going to start setting up the sump and putting in the live rock and the salt water and then uh, we'll be closer to having this finished. All right, so the banana tank is now fully uh, built. So as you can see, I decided to use uh, like a two hill approach, if you will. So we have a, a mountain here, a mountain there, and we have some rocks leading against the back on the very top only to create some caves and to make sure that I don't have any detritus trap in the back. Um, yeah, so now it's time to put everyone back in. So the clownfish, um, the chromies, uh, the damsels, the mollies, and also the banana eels. And uh, I also decided to stock this tank a little bit further with some uh, cardinal fish, which are currently acclimating, and uh, I will show you those in a minute. Also some uh, spider decorator crabs, uh, some red fire shrimp, and I believe I bought something else. Um, oh, actually I got two decorator crabs. All right, so I'm gonna acclimate everyone and then get back to you shortly. Okay, so I have transferred all fish except for the banana eels. I'm saving them for last to show you guys um, a couple of close-ups, uh, show you how much they have grown. And the fire shrimp are almost ready to get in. The big spider decora decorator crabs as well. And these cardinal fish as well. So let's go over to the uh, quarantine or holding tank where the banana eels are in and take a closer look. Okay, so the water is a little bit murky, but I think you guys can see them pretty well. So they've definitely grown in length as well as in girth. And the, the one that, has this, that, that already had the black spots um, when, I, when he was younger, and uh, that one you know, keeps looking the same way, I guess. But the other one that didn't have the black spots, I thought, um, which is the one up there, I thought that one was probably not a banana eel, but now you can see that he has been developing some of these black spots. So I guess as they get older, the more of the black spots they will develop. And yeah, so the goby in the back there, he was actually snuggling with the eels in this, uh, Petco cave, so that's really nice to see that they get along so well. And he was really stressed out during this time. He actually jumped out once and they had to catch him. So, oh, the eel just spit out a part of a damselfish. Huh, that's crazy. So, I guess the damsel died and he ate it because I've never seen them eat a live fish. So, and the clownfish that are living with them, hopefully they're gonna be safe. <laughs> but I think I just have to keep feeding them regularly. It, I, I have been having trouble feeding them in here, but they just weren't eating. So um, I'm pretty sure that they're going to find their appetite again very soon. So I'm gonna catch these remaining fish, including the uh, goby and the damsel that I see there, the one that's alive. And uh, See if there's anything else in here. I, I don't think so, but yeah, I'm gonna get going on that, and then uh, we will. Sh I will show you how they will look in the new tank and in the new pipe system. So that's pretty cool. I actually caught both of them, and uh, we'll transfer them both at the same time. And here we go. <laughs> Beautiful eels.
Okay, so here we have the final aquarium. Uh, so it's been about a week or so and I decided to actually also uh, turn this into a feeding video so that hopefully the eels will come out a little bit more. Um, so yeah, as you can see, um, it looks a little bit different than what I thought it would turn out to be. So I had the sand, uh, you know, neatly covering the pipes. And uh, unfortunately, I have, you know, a diamond goby and I have these uh, engineer gobies. Uh, they are hiding right now, but I have five of those. So they're constantly, you know, moving the sand around. So it's really difficult to keep the pipe, uh, you know, covered with sand. So, and also they're, you know, spitting out and, you know, relocating sand constantly. So I have sand inside the pipes now. So uh, for me to clean that out would entail me to, you know, take everything out and uh, it's just going to happen again. So I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And yeah, so... Um, one thing you may have noticed is I have a lot of um, sponges in there. And these are not fake sponges. These are real sponges from Florida. And the reason why I decided to put them in here is because the 1,000-gallon aquarium uh, is going to house a lot of new angelfish. And they need uh, sponges in their diet. So I decided to use this aquarium kind of as a grow-out tank because I think it looks pretty cool to have you know, some red accents in here. And uh, I have no angel fish in here, so nothing is going to, you know, uh, kill off the sponges. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is, uh, you know, when you buy these, uh, make sure that the seller never exposes these to any, um, any air. Because once, you know, a piece of the sponge has been exposed to air, you know, that part of the sponge is going to die off. And it's going to keep dying off the rest of the sponge. So the whole sponge will eventually die. So that's why it's very important. Uh, that you always keep this sponge submerged and unfortunately that means when you buy this sponge and you want to put them in inside this tank you basically have to add the water you know that the sponge came in as well so there's a little bit of a risk you know getting parasites into the aquarium but uh, nothing happened here so i'm really happy and uh, yeah so obviously uh, because these sponges cannot be exposed to air that means when i do my water changes which used to be you know like 80 percent so up down to like this rock. I can only do water changes up to like, you know, the upper, uh, right above that first sponge. So that's a little bit of a limitation, but uh, that's fine. It just means I have to do my water changes a, bit, a little bit more frequently. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so I think everything looks pretty good otherwise. Um, let's talk a little bit about the filtration. Um, so here we have a 100 gallon aquarium. And this used to be the refugium for the 1,000 gallon tank. And before that, it used to be the main aquarium for all these clownfish here. So here we have uh, basically just some uh, filter floss, um, holding it in place with some egg crate. And I'm using basically LG uh, magnets uh, to just, um, LG scrapers just keep this in place. And then here we have some Matala mat. And then here we have some uh, Seeker Matrix, the pond version, so the bigger version. Uh, a lot of keto and then a lot of Calopra prolifera and then here we have some uh, bio blocks and then another slab of uh, metalamat and then the return pumps so I have two return pumps one of them is the main pump that pumps the water back from each end and then I also have you know a return down there as you can see probably on each side but I'm not using it as much because I uh, was able to get a really good deal on these uh, gyro pumps in the back. These are these really uh, long from, from here all the way to here. So these are, I got a really good deal. So I have two of those installed. And uh, here's the controller. I haven't turned off now because I'm feeding. But uh, yeah, so that keeps the water nicely turned over. Uh, for fish, I added a yellow ras. And I also added some... Um, a couple more of these chromies, but I was only at three and they're schooling fish. A couple more of these blue damsels, because I think they're really cool. And uh, I also added some other types of damsels that look very similar to the black clownfish. So <laughs> it's a little bit confusing, but uh, here's one. So it's, yeah, it's a little bit hard to, to show you. But uh, yeah, so, and also I got three of these cherry shrimps. So one, two, and three, uh, or fire shrimp they're called. And uh, they're doing pretty well. So uh, I also have two decorator spider crabs and what they have done is, you know, they have nibbled on some of these corals in order to play, I mean the sponges in order to place them on their backs. So 
that's a little bit funny so hopefully they will grow back pretty soon and uh, the eels are very happy very uh, healthy uh, they have not used the pipe system fortunately I think that will come eventually I noticed that obviously the goby has been here so that's been really fun to see him you know inside the pipe um, and the um, engineer gobies have been inside as well and even the damsels go inside so uh, it's a pretty pretty fun, you know, little playground on the bottom. So here we have a damsel that just came out of there. So it's pretty cool for them to explore. A little bit difficult to keep clean, so hopefully there's not going to be too much dirt uh, accumulating in there. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to point a power head of, on, on each opening. So we have one, the center opening, and then we have one here and back there. And the feed mode just stopped, so the water is going to go... Actually, I'm just going to turn off the feed more because there's still some food left. But uh, yeah, so openings on each corner of the tank for the pipe system. So the eels are nicely spread out. They can, you know, separate themselves if both of them want to use the pipe system at some point at the same time. And if, if there's any aggression. But uh, these eels, similar to my Tessalata, my giant mori, they have been pretty much together the whole time. And uh, obviously they're not fully grown. They're going to grow to two feet and they're going to get pretty much as thick as my forearm. So they're going to be quite large uh, eventually. And at that point, it may become an issue, you know, with keeping clownfish in here. And they also have some Bengal cardinals. But um, yeah, I think if I keep them, you know, on a diet like this, like big krill pieces, uh, you know, soaked in garlic, um, eventually I'm training them to eat only food that smells like garlic. And this is really the key to keep them from eating your tank mates, which is the same trick that I'm using with my giant moray, my tessalata moray, my viper moray. Uh, so they haven't eaten any of my tank mates ever. I count them frequently and they're always never missing anyone. So um, yeah, that may be a good tip for you to, uh, to try at home. But uh, yeah, I think everything went well. Like I said, for lighting, I'm going to be, I'm using two Hydra 52s. So kind of some old lighting that I got used works really well for this tank. Um, you know, it helps, you know, for these sponges to grow as well. And they have some uh, green star pops in the back. So nothing like fancy corals, but uh, this is not supposed to be a, a coral tank because it's just going to be too much work to keep dosing and, uh, you know, keep in check of all the parameters. I don't, I don't run a skimmer down there, as you may have seen. Um, so it's really just a refugium and biological filtration and some mechanical filtration in the front. And that's really the only filtration I'm using here. So um, I don't want to overwhelm the system and make it too complicated. So uh, I kind of like it the way it is now. And uh, yeah, so this is it for the update to the Banana Mori at the aquarium. Um, obviously, I'm going to be you know, providing future updates. Um, one thing with saltwater or aquariums in general, you don't want to do to make too many changes. So this is why I'm not posting as often as other people who constantly make changes to their tanks, you need to also let things rest, you know, mature and let it, you know, settle in. So I cannot make, you know, drastic changes all the time, but uh, I will provide, you know, updates to this tank as things, uh, uh, you know, happen. And until then, uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about banana mores, mores in general. And also uh, angelfish and tanks and some of the other things I'm going to be keeping. So I think there's going to be really exciting content. Uh, banana eels looking beautiful. Uh, this one is the bigger one. He's always been looking you know, like a real banana with the big black spots. The other one came in younger and he didn't have any black spots, but he was yellow. So I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it's actually banana eel, but it is because he has grown uh, since then and he has developed some black spots as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy that he's looking like a real banana as well. <laughs> and uh, prices are, you know, around $800 to $1,000, depending on where you buy. I got these for $625 on eBay. Uh, so that was a good deal. And, uh, but they're not as difficult to get as they used to be. So uh, I've seen a few of them in stores now for like $800 to $900. And uh, so if you really want one, you can buy one or ask your local pet shop to order you one or, or two. So it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, Viper moray or giant moray are almost impossible to get. Tessalata is a very common yield that you can find. But uh, yeah. Uh, so again, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And I hope I see you again in the next video. Thanks.